Greetings, all of you. Next review we're doing is The Tower of Terror, a movie that I grew up with. Even though they already made a film in 1941, that's not the one I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the one 1997 supernatural horror television film directed by DJ Mac Hayes, based on the theme park attraction Twilight Zone Tower. It's in Hollywood Studios, Disney, and Florida, or Orlando to be exact. Any case. <clears throat> I'll start with Buzzy Crocker, known to be uh, actor as Steve Gutenberg. We have know how many movies he's been in. <laughs> he's a journalist who was fired from the Los Angeles Banner, where his girlfriend, Jill, worked as the editor, for publishing a new story which turned out to be fake. He now writes Supermark Tabloids, the natural inquisitor, with the help of his young niece, Anne, with whom Buzz is close friends, an elderly woman named... Um, sorry, <clears throat> Abigail, Georgery, came to visit Buzzy and explained that on Halloween 1939, she was witness to the bizarre inclusion of Hollywood Tower <clears throat> Hotel. When five hotel guests, singer Caroline Crossan, actor Gilbert London, much loved child star Sally Sign, her nanny, M.N. Partridge, bellhop Dewey Todd, mysteriously disappeared without a trace. The lightning struck the elevator, and they were on their way up to the party at the hotel at Tip Top Club. Abigail says that the nanny, Emma Lynn, was a bitter witch who tried to put a curse on saying, Oh, please. Only for the curse to misfire, trapping all five people they were in the elevator as ghosts who haunted the hotel. Buzzy investigate the Shuttle Hotel and found the Book of Spells mentioned Abigail's story. The book revealed the curse only revealed by its contrary. Abigail, who also explains that the item that belongs to the person who must be found, what happened in 1939 must be repeated to break the curse. Buzzing in and needs the help of Q, who is the uh, great grandson of Dewey, the bellhop. Q is reluctant, but he decided to help his deceased grandfather with four ghosts, especially as he stands in the hiring the hotel for its branch. And from 1939, the event is revealed. It's not a hotel. Buzzy and Ian meet the extras named Claire Pua, who has been hired so Buzzy could take fake pictures of the ghost for the supermarket tabloid. Buzzy tried to develop a relationship with Claire, but she dismissed him when Buzzy expressed more interest in the story in his career. And he helped the spirit fear and injunctions. Some of the ghosts appeared to repeat themselves as frightened off Buzzy and Ian, and Ian steadfastly offered to help the ghost escape the curse. Finally, the ghost called him here, and when it appeared, she is Claire Portney. We get some witty banter from each of the spirits in this part of the review, in this part of the episode, I mean, movie. <laughs> As we see, each of them are compared to one another in so many levels. Like Sonny, like Son, like Sally and Dewey, they are like two peas in the pod. And of course, Miss Emmett was there to let them know that it wasn't her that would do that to hurt Sally. He th she thinks of Sally as her own daughter. And as for the Guy who falls in love, as well in love with Coleana, Carolina. I'm just gonna call her Carol for short. She describes herself as Claire Poupois, that Buzzy already talked to. Also, Anne, well, blames Emia of the curse of the guest. Shock and dismay are being put in the blame. Emma states that he that she that she's innocent, which is the other ghost agreed. Which is true. Jill, meanwhile, has been researching Buzzy's story more and learned that Abigail is the sister of Sally Sign. Yeah, I know, right? Bummer me, Horace. Abigail was secretly jealous of her younger sister's talent from a few Halloween was made at birthday. No one seemed to remember. No presents. No birthday. No party. No nothing. And believe me, Abigail was put in a nut house for so long of her jealous spite over her sister. That's where she found out the information about how she hates her sister. Who could ever hate their sister? I mean, I love my sister very much. Rebe 
Abigail was the one who cursed her sister. Has been the same item ever since, but is not, but is allowed on a day release. But as he will realize that finding the personal effect of the guest, the lock of Sally's hair, Miss Partridge's handkerchief, Dewey's spare bellboy hat, and Gilbert's awkward specters and Colin's locket, the play repairing the elevator has given Abigail the means to complete the curse. He and Jill rush back to the hotel, but there was too late. The ghost will board an appearance. Before that very moment, Jill offered her offered offered him a chance to redeem himself by not helping with the um, with the spirits and send them free. But then he chose to help the spirits instead of getting his fame back by using the Sally Science Sister story. Which she really didn't like like but hey that's how it is. In any case before the door closed it though, Emily was uh, mm -mm, sorry. Jill was a Oh, sorry. You gotta read the sketch. Gotta read the screw. Sorry, description of my thing. He and Joe went back to the hotel. They were too late, and the ghost aboard a repairing elevator. Oh, here it is. But only Sally makes it out of the elevator before the door closes, and Anne is trapped in there. And they confronted Abigail, who tearfully admitted that before Sally appeared. And the elevator continued to move up to get stuck in the elevator for only minutes left. Crazy a curse comes back. Sally explained that the party was a surprise birthday party for Abigail. So beautiful. I apologize to Abigail for not being able to get to it. And Sally had kept the present she wanted to give to Abby. A golden friendship bracelet with two hearts engraved with it. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Abigail is distressed by her mistake, but doesn't know how to stop the spell. Buzzy, Q, and Jill, and Abby, and Sally have used the elevator service, catching up to the other elevator for and managed to leap from the emergency escape hatch and rejoice Buzzies and other at the exact at eight zero five o'clock. Light and struck the hotel again. Both cut the plumbing toward the basement. However, with the love of Sally and Abby, they were able to recruit and break the curse as they lovely hold hands. They both dissolve into shower of golden sparkles that safely stop both elevator. Just about the crash. Oh beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I can't help it. I'm all choked up. Especially when it comes to my lovely sister. In any case, <clears throat> Buzzy and his group follow behind as Carolina, Gilbert, Dewey, Emma, and Sally finally ascend to the tip top club, restoring its former glory. One by one, the ghosts had ascended to heaven along with other party goers. Gilbert was able to finally show his wing to his affectionate love fiance and they were going and there and now husband and wife. And me, Emmeline, was able to do, finish her duties to give Sally to her parents. And Dewey got the respect for her, from his father. Which is he was a great 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 grandfather. And now Abigail is now a child again. Which is kind of yeah. weird. Okay, all I can say is, I'm sure... Okay, how did that old lady die again? Okay, this is my only this is my only criticism about the whole thing. How is it possible that Abigail was turned into a little girl in this? How? Is that ghost magic? Love magic? Death magic? Guys, do you guys know what this is all about? All I can say is, this is pretty dark. When I was young, it didn't seem too dark to me, but as an adult, it's dark. This is a really dark part. How did Abigail die? Did she have a stroke? Did she have a heart attack? Or did her sister kill her? Nonetheless, she just out appeared with Sally and thanks her for the present. The sisters then hold hands and vanish the golden sparkle with villain. Curse on the hotel is finally broken. And now, month a year later, they're having Halloween at the hall at the hall at the Hollywood Tower Hotel is restored to be open to public. And now Q is in charge as the new owner, and they all live happily ever after. So in the end, that movie, to most folks, it wasn't exactly a good thing. But for me, I adored it. It was a great movie. I mean, come on, seriously. <laughs> and to tell you the truth. There is a novel based on this movie, and I will tell you about it now. Hmm. A novel. A 2003 novel. I think I'll read it. I am a bookworm. Now, <clears throat> as you know, Steve Gutenberg 
made several appearances in several movies, which I do not like. But the only ones that I know, the ones he was in, is Three Man a Baby, because I know that movie very well. He was in it Takes Two, yes, Mary Kay and Ashley, which I adore. Casper Spirit Begins, oh yes, that one's a classic. But his last performance was uh, a few others I didn't like. As for the other ones, <laughs> the Poseidon Adventure, never watched it though. And as for that, that was all the only movies that I knew and loved when I was a child. But rumor has it that they're planning to do a police academy, which he'll be in it. Now, let's name our other actors besides him. <laughs> Sorry guys, I just had brunch. Next, we have Anne, we have Christine Dunst, Nia Peepers, Michael, I mean Michelle McShine, Mizzy Sticklin, Melior Hardin, and so many others that we don't know about. We have no time to talk about them, but I'm going to talk about the ones that did the most works. But in the end, mostly I'm going to talk about her. I know, off topic. I usually get off topic. Let's see about films that she has done. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was in Jumanji! Okay. The one who played um, Anne in the movie was Jumanji. And she was even the voice of young Anastasia from Anastasia. She was in Kiki's Delivery Service as voice as Kiki. And she was in Small Soldier's voice and as the girlfriend. She was even in the anime adventures of Tom Sawyer. Wow. Didn't know that. And she was in Spider-Man. Whoa, she was MJ. Didn't know that. And she was in Keanu for... Oh, this one is a movie I've seen a long time ago. Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3. He, he, she showed up in a lot of movies. And the last character I want to talk about is the one who played the aforementioned Q. Why? Well, I'll let you know in a minute. Let's see. Q, 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 Q. Q. Here, Q. The one who played him. He played in a few movies growing up. He played in Richie Rich as Professor Kingpin. Yeah, Professor Kingpin. I love Richie Rich. That was just a classic. He was Muff Potter and Tom and Huck. Disney have the taste in the live action one. He was Tuck and Roll in A Bug's Life. He was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids as Kung Bung. The TV series, of course. He was in Todd McFlynn's Bond, which I never care about. And he was in, well... Treasure Plant as hands. In Canada. And well, he was even happily ever, happily in ever after. That movie was never good. And that's basically all it. So, folks, what do you guys think? Is this a smashing success? Or is it just a flop from the past? Who knows? But it is based on the Tower of Terror. It's the last beautiful one. Last, next year, I'll be going down there. And I'll be on those rides with my boyfriend. Uh, as it happened to be one day. Oh boy. Yes, I know, I know. I had to explain things, if you know what I mean. Anyway, that's all I have today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the review, and good day to you all. <laughs> okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel, and remember. There's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. Hee <laughs> hee.